So hi, I'm Joel. I'm going to tell you everything I know about how to be funny. I can't imagine it'll take more than about five minutes. So why is this an interesting topic? Well, if you went to school in this country, you learned that there are three ways to be popular. You can be rich, you can be good looking, or you can be good at sports. But what they never told you is that there's a fourth way. You can be funny. Now, a couple of years ago, I was giving a talk on cancer, or maybe religion, I forget. And someone came up to me after the talk and she asked me, how can I be funny? What I told her was that humor was basically about the unexpected. So she asked me, what do people expect? And I didn't really have a good answer for her. So I went home, I thought about it, locked myself in the bathroom, and I uh, This seems to be stuck on the slide. <laughs> Back one. Yeah. Uh, so I spent several years doing research. I learned a great number of things, uh, some of which had to do with being funny, and that's what I'm going to share with you here tonight. So the first rule I learned about being funny, <laughs> pretend to do research. So most actual research is on really boring topics like AIDS and software patents and global warming. <laughs> so if you pretend you've researched something interesting like how to be funny, that's good. Also do the wrong research. Real scientists don't make mistakes. So if you do, that's funny. This is why there are so many jokes about cold fusion and arsenic-based bacteria. Follow the rule of three. Whether you're talking about stooges, branches of government, or list of things, it's funny when you have exactly three items. This is a law of statistics. You can actually prove it using statistics. I'm not going to do that. You skipped one of my slides again. Repeat yourself. You're making it hard for me. Uh, so invent statistics. 99% uh, of politicians know this, but only 27% of the rest of us do. And this is a difference that's significant at the 5% level. Uh, at the 5% level. At the 5% level. Repeat yourself. So children know this, but adults forget it. And also, children know this, but adults forget it. And finally, children know this, but adults forget it. I think I had one more thing to say. Misunderstand a negative. So most complex statements can be false in a variety of ways. So next time someone contradicts you, rather than punching her, you can try and find a creative misunderstanding. Lighten the situation with humor. Similarly, when you're accused of something, you can agree by disagreeing and sort of come up with a non-denial denial. denial. Uh, suggested ways to do this include, I only did that a few times, or I didn't inhale, or the chainsaw slipped. <laughs> you can also go off topic. Uh, one common way of doing this is by putting up a slide that says one thing and talking about something entirely different. Uh, 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 that was the wrong slide for that one. But <laughs> repeat yourself. So children know this, but adults forget it. Uh, this is slide 13, so that means that this slide appears at most seven more times, and I'm pretty sure it's less than that. So maybe six or five. Uh, choose words wisely. Some words are funnier than others. Permute is funnier than reorder. Denounce is funnier than criticize. Word is funnier than letter blob. And communism is funnier than terror famine. That says terror famine down there where you can't read it. <laughs> Denounce communism by permuting word order. This one I discovered while I was researching the Cold War. In America, we tell jokes, but apparently in Soviet Russia, jokes tell on you what a country. Misinterpret how questions. Uh, the most famous example of this is the Beatles when they were asked, how did you find America? And they said, Google Maps. Uh, you probably won't get asked that, but you might get asked, how did you sleep? And you could give an answer involving a pair of ethnic looking women or men. <laughs> Claim the specific as the general. Uh, musically, I'm really into duets between Huey Lewis and Gwyneth Paltrow. On TV, I like dancing shows that involve Palin's. And at the movies, I love films where Polly Shore joins the army. <laughs> you can do the opposite as well which is claiming the general is the specific. I don't know if any of you guys saw Glee last week, but if you didn't, you screwed up because it was the episode where they sang campy versions of all the songs you used to love when you were a little kid. <laughs> now, 
That's what I have to say about being funny, so I thought I'd say three rules about how not to be funny. One, Arnold Schwarzenegger pregnant is not funny. Two, everyone already knows the difference between a prostitute with diarrhea and an epileptic corn husker, so don't ask them about that. And three, slavery is not funny, and I'm never invited to Thanksgiving again. So use these powers responsibly. Buy my books, read my blog, Twitter, friend, parties, lunch, godfather, will laugh, Bruce at Tom. Thank you.